Hi, I'm Greta Grip. Me Jones. And welcome to our virtual workshop on knitting your data. This is a unique workshop since it will be filmed during lockdown when we couldn't be in the same place. This workshop will be a mix of artist talk, workshop, and experimentation. And at the end, we'll ask you to fill out a short questionnaire to help us design our participatory art project, which will be knitting data in Port Hope. Okay, hi, it's Greta again. Here's a little bit about me. I enjoy pulling the strings of what is traditional knitting and winding the, it around the digital age. I started to exhibit my knitted food in around 2009. And since then, my practice has evolved from knitting QR codes to L wire. Currently, I knit with my hack knitting machine. I hacked it by removing its brain and, ex and replacing it with a USB port. In my practice, I explore the use of layering texts and symbols, colors and textures. My work challenges the understanding of what knitting is supposed to look like. So here are some of my recent pieces. This one with the, from the Ottawa Art Gallery called Filtered is about 12 different pieces where I show the backs and the fronts of the knitted items. The other one, the Deep End Bunker, uh, was when I was in artist residency and I had 27 pieces. You can see in the lower part, there's lights and that's why I use LED lights in those pieces. So here I am knitting away and it's quite different. I'm sure it's not what you expected. And the needles are going in and out, in and out as I push the cartridge along the needles. Hi, this is Lee. I'm a researcher with the iStudio lab at Queen's University, researching e-textiles, which means electronic textiles, hybrid crafts, and textile personal fabrication. In my research, I develop DIY toolkits so individuals can design and create interactive soft technologies to suit their own needs. I also love running community e-textile workshops at art galleries and makerspaces and creating interactive participatory artworks. Uh, E-textiles is the practice of repurposing the metallic properties of textiles such as um, silver or gold or stainless steel threads. And instead of using them for their uh, aesthetic properties, using them for their interactive properties so we can make textiles that are responding to us. The cool thing about uh, E-textiles is that it allows us to craft with technology. So these little objects are sensors and actuators and they don't look like computers instead they look like things that we might see around our home and we can use so many different techniques with e-textiles so for example just how you would interact with normal textiles where you can spin them weave them and knit them we can do the same thing with e-textiles to make different types of computers so here are some examples of some that are soft fuzzy and stretchy and they were all made with different techniques. So when I saw Greta's work, we were really interested in combining uh, textiles with the interactive uh, possibilities of sensors and actuators. And we have been an artist duo since 2019. We enjoy engaging with the community with participatory artworks that evolve over time and require involvement from the audience. The life of a building came to me a few years ago. 
I was really enjoying the new building of the Ottawa Art Gallery. It's a long, it's a tall building uh, with many floors and stairs and elevators. And I love the movement of the building. And I had this idea, wouldn't it be great to capture the life of a building? And I knew about this other knitting machine that was made open source. And I thought that would be fabulous if there was a, if there was a um, sensor on doors or different steps and people walking through in and out of the building, in and out of the galleries, they would trigger the knitting machine to, to work. But then of course I couldn't figure out how to do the whole sensors. I mean, I am a knitting artist, but not a sensor person. And that's why, and that's where Lee came in. When I told her my idea, she immediately said, I know how to do it. And that is how this whole project started. Thanks to the Ottawa Art Gallery for sponsoring this project. So during the pandemic, many individuals turned to handcrafts such as knitting to cope with the uncertainty and anxiety we were collectively feeling. And in this artwork, we want to bring knitting out of isolation and to use it as a method of community participation to document the, the recovery year at the local art gallery. In July 2021, we launched the Life of a Building at the Ottawa Art Gallery in Ottawa, Canada, which knits visitor data at the physical gallery, as well as online interactions on the gallery website. Each month, the color of the yarn changes, creating a tangible, soft record of this unpredictable year. For the Critical Mass Art Leaders Project, we envision another project very similar to the Life of a Building, but much more community-based. This one is called Life of a Small Town. Life of a Small Town tangibilizes and records activity in a local community through a responsive knitting machine. We live in a world in which data mining is a hidden practice and the digital traces we leave behind are collected and used without our knowledge. By contrast, our textile artworks are transparent in their conversion of selected data into something tactile. In our projects, the data sources have varied from human activity, biofeedback to environmental sensors. And for this one, it's up to you. In this workshop, you'll, you will learn how to knit your own data. My lovely studio assistant helped us out on this. Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to do a French knitting. Um, and I'm going to ta tell, teach you how to make it and what you'll need. I'll tell you guys what you need first. You're going to need a pen or a pencil, doesn't really matter. You're going to need popsicle sticks. I painted mine to make them a bit more colorful. I have a blue one a green one, a purple one, and a yellow one. But you can also always use normal popsicle sticks. It really does not matter. I have a toilet paper roll that is pink that I painted, I like it. Or you can just use a normal one. You'll also need scissors, a glue gun. When you're using a glue gun, don't forget to have your parents beside. And you're gonna need yarn. I picked this purple one. And it always looks better when it has many colors in it. If it's just one color, that's fine. But I like when there's many colors. There you go. And I'll teach. I'll show you guys how I made. So I made two to show you guys. So I have this one. It's all simple and it's really cool. And I also have a colored one. Now I like this one better. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make one of these and later on the next video, I will teach you guys how to actually knit something with it. And what they actually look like, you can have these wood ones. We have a wood, I have a wood one and a plastic one. So they're very different. There you go, okay. So first before starting, put everything aside. Actually, don't put the toilet paper and the popsicle sticks aside or the pencil. The rest, goodbye. See you later. And don't forget to plug in your glue gun. Okay, you're gonna start. You're gonna grab your toilet paper roll and you're gonna grab your pen and do four lines in the middle. Okay, so the middle would be about here, 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 and here. So one of my lines are here. Another one of my lines are here. My third line is here. And my fourth line is right there. So those are my lines. That's where I'm going to need them. Okay. It doesn't matter what order you do or anything like that. But it really doesn't matter. It can be this order or whatever order. Then you don't need your pen anymore. 
and you're gonna grab your glue gun. With the lines, you're gonna guide yourself to where to put them. That's how I made it, it's way easier. Now here, you see they're sticking out. On the real ones too, they're sticking out. Because if not, if they're not sticking out like this, if they're not sticking out, you can't put yarn anywhere around it. Doesn't even have to be perfect on the bottom, but try to make them the same size up top. Now, don't make the opposite. They all have to be the same size up. So this is this is like our example. This is going to be our example. Leave it right here for you guys. Okay, so we're going to start. Um, I'm going to start with the yellow one, because why not start with the yellow? So I'm going to put it about like this. I want it to stick out a lot. Now, I want it about like this, so I'm going to grab my pen and do a line right here. Eh, my pen doesn't work. Okay, there we go. I got my line. Then, you're going to grab your glue gun and make a line, not going all the way up, starting at the middle right here. You're going to press and make a line. doesn't have to be super straight, but try your best. There we go. Then, you're going to be careful because obviously you don't want to get burnt. Then you're gonna stick it starting by the top. Sorry, I did a little mistake. And there you go, you got one stuck. If they fall off, that's fine. Don't do it with tape, because I promise you they will fall off in a few hours or in a few, like, not very long ago. If you didn't put enough glue, you'll see that when it'll dry in a few seconds. Next line, here is my next line that I will be using. Actually, I'll use this one. Um, and before starting, that was a bad choice of mine to pick it there. You should always pick, like, opposite. So, my opposite is this one. So, my opposite one will be green. Why not do green? Like, that's going to be good. So, this would be about my opposite. I would place it. It doesn't have to be perfectly, but try your best. So, this one is pretty perfect here. So I'm gonna grab my pencil again and do a line. There we go. That was a small line, but that can still work. Then I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and do a line. Okay, there's my line. I'm gonna grab my piece of wood and stick it. Now that it's stuck, I maybe didn't put enough glue, but that's fine. We can always re-glue it. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to grab my purple one, and I'm going to place it here. I'm going to place it here, so. There we go. Now that I got the hang of it, I won't do a line, because I got the hang. But you can also continue doing the line if you want. I'm going to grab my glue gun and do a line. And try to be as straight, but if you can't, that's totally fine. There we go. Boom. So I got three and I'm just missing. Ooh, that's money. Maybe you should hold them for a bit. Yep. Okay, then you are going to grab your blue one. And you're going to glue it in the middle. You can also do the opposite by putting the glue on this and then sticking there. But I like more doing it on here than that. You have two choices. Oops, too much glue. That happens. There we go. Okay. So now that they're all glued on, well, you did it. And there you have it. How to make a French knitter. Go see the next video. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome back to the second video. In the second video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to start the knitting. This is how it's gonna look in the middle of the way, or yeah. Now, to start, I'm still with my purple thing. And before starting, just forgot, 
if you guys haven't went to see the first video, please go see the first video because it teaches you guys how to make one of these. Anyways, so let's get started. First, in your ball of yarn that I saw my beautiful purple, you're going to grab the tip and you're going to put it down so it peeks up. Exaggerate, please exaggerate. Got the your hand and some of your wrist. <clears throat> Anyways, <coughs> then since you're gonna grab it, put it in your hand and the pinky with the yarn that's down here that we call the tail oh, in your pinky. Perfect. So now with the other string, you are gonna do a circle. But you don't want it to be tight, because if not that, the, then that goes wrong, and you don't want that. So, you're going to do a circle, not super loose and not super tight. Mm, that's good enough. Yeah. Then, you are going to skip the green one, or go past the green one, do a circle. Go past the blue one, do a circle. Go past the yellow one. Do a circle, go past the purple one, and do a circle. There you go, you did your first run. Now, you're going to come here to the green, then to the blue. You're going to hold it. Bring it down. Now, since it's not too tight, you can put it over. And sometimes, like I just did, it comes off, but that's fine because you always just put it back on. Now, you put it over. There you go. It's hard, always the first one's kind of hard, but that's okay. Then, you're gonna do it again. Hold it with your thumb on the yellow one. Turn it over the blue. There we go. Second one done. Now for the yellow one, hold it on the purple one. Oops. See, always the first one is always the hardest. But that's fine. Because you'll go through it. And give yourself a bit of yarn. Now, on the purple one is kind of hard. And by now, you can let go of the pinky one. Or you can continue holding it. I like more continuing to hold it. Now. It's here. Now you have to pass, pass these three over. You're going to start with the most bottom one. You go over. The second bottom one, you go over. And the last one, you go over. Now, go on the green one. You go past. On the blue one, you go over again. On the yellow one, and you go over. Back to the purple one, you go over. And there you have it. Now, you just started it. Sometimes when you, you want to pull it a bit, one, it's going to be down. Go and see the third video so I can show you how to undo it. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to the third video of the French Knitter. Yay, you guys made it. Third video, yay. Okay, after this, you guys are going to be like pros. Like, yeah. Anyways, so last video, the second video, go check it. I taught you guys how to start start it. And go see the very first video that I taught you guys how to make these French Knitters. Now, now this time, I'm going to teach you guys, we won't need this stuff. I'm going to teach you guys how to um, cast off. Now, I kind of cheated, and I did a different one that I started a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, and it's pretty long. I want it this long, because I'm just going to attach it in my mother's car, because, yeah. So, what you're going to do, since now I'm at the yellow, I'm going to go on the blue, and I'm going to do one last turn. Last one. Uh -huh. Then, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to, this blue one, I'm going to put it on my yellow one. Okay. 
There it is. It's on my yellow one. Then I'm going to grab the bottom yellow one and put it on top. There you go. Then I'm going to put this one. Uh, then you're going to grab this one, put it on the purple one, put the bottom one on top. Grab this one. It's always this light blue that's falling, actually. Put it on the dark, on the green one. Grab the bottom one. Put it up. And there you have it. Take that one off. Pull it out. Pull it here. And there you have it. Guys, accident happens, even I do them. Now, I took it off by accident, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna grab the tail, not this one, this one, and you're gonna put it through the holes. And next one. And the last one. Then you're gonna pull. And there you have it, a French, uh, there you have it, a French knit, a knitter. Look how great that looks. It can also be a bracelet, or don't forget, it can also be a necklace. I'm probably going to be wearing it as a bracelet. I hope you like learning how to do a French knitter. Have a nice day. Bye. So in the tutorial, we showed you how to knit, but now how do you knit your data? So for one example, I decided I was going to capture how much I watch TV during the week. So what I did is whenever I sat down to watch TV, I started French knitting and every day I changed the color of the yarn that I used for that. And at the end of the week, you can see which days I binge watch shows and which days I maybe watched only one. Um, and through this new record, you could see during the pandemic how I have engaged in TV watching. Um, some other ideas of things that you could knit to knit your data is, for example, knitting during your commute to see how much time you spend commuting or in the car or doing a certain activity or waiting in line. And with these records, you get like a tangible visualization of how long you've been doing an activity. Knitting can be an isolating activity, much like our experience during the COVID pandemic. During this time, Lee and I envisioned life of a small town as a small portable knitting machine response to activity in Port Hope. During the pandemic, we have been thinking about tangibly representing community. Can we record community activity as a knitted row? In contrast to most recording methods, our record of the recovery will be an imperfect, tangible, soft, colorful knitted tube. We will be able to gauge how Port Hope comes back to life with each day or week of activity recorded as a different color of yarn. It will require a collective presence for it to be created, and we will have a visual knitted representation of the life of a small town. For this year-long project, we want to involve the community, not only the tangible record, but the design of what gets recorded in the first place. So fill out our survey to help us design the life of a small town and tell us what Port Hope means to you. We will be asking questions like, if Port Hope was a sound, what would it be? If Port Hope was a taste, what would it be? If Port Hope was a smell, what would it be? If Port Hope was a color, what would it be? What is your favorite thing about Port Hope? What are your favorite locations or landmarks in Port Hope? How has the pandemic changed Port Hope? What has stayed the same? What actions would you like to see Port Hope take? And imagine Port Hope 10 years from now. How does it look, feel, smell, taste, or sound? We can't wait to see all your responses. And we can't wait to see this machine knitting in Port Hope.